All right, so Coulomb's law. Um, with Coulomb's law, we're just basically look at how to manipulate this particular equation. So force is equal to K, which is a constant. This is the number 8.99 times 10 to the ninth. Um, you can use 9. Um, obviously, it makes it easier. But remember that um, when you get to the short answer questions, don't put it as 9 times 10 to the ninth. Put it in as 8.99. Okay. And then times the charge of the first particle, times the charge of the second particle, divided by the distance in between squared. Okay, this is actually the same equation that we'll use when we get to gravitation when we're talking about the charges or the force between planets. So, you know, even that these little minuscule di um, charges that we get in, elect in electrons, it has the same equation as when we're talking about planets, which is kind of an, an interesting physics phenomena. All right. Um, the first one, which graph best represents the electrostatic force between an alpha particle with a charge of 2 plus and a positively charged nucleus as a function of their distance of separation? Well, I don't really care about the 2 plus. What I care about is how do we manipulate Coulomb's law? Um, Coulomb's law tells us that as I increase distance, because this is um, squared, I'm going to get a smaller force, which makes sense because the farther away something is from another, um, object, the, the less force it should impose upon it. But it's also squared, so I'm going to get some kind of exponential growth. Well, I got two equations here that give me exponential growth. I get this one here, which is in decreasing. I get this one here that's increasing. This one's not going to work. This one's not going to work. Those are more of a direct relationship. Um, uh, but I want to say which gra graph represents the electrostatic force between um, two charges um, as a function of their distance and separation. So the further they get apart, the less the force. So obviously what I want to go with, with this. All right, in the diagram below, two positively charged spheres, A and B, mass M and A and B, whatever, whatever, are located at distances D apart, right? Okay, so I have a, some kind of a positively charged sphere and another positively charged sphere. And remember, since it's positively charged, that the charge is pushing away from it, all the force is leaving it. Same with this one. Okay, and also, and then we also want to say which diagram represents the directions of the gravitational force. Now, gravitational force is always that the largest object is is attracted to the smallest object. Now, the 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 small largest object, or I'm sorry, the smallest object is attracted to the largest object, but gravitational force is always an attractive force. So the force of gravity is you're always attracted towards it, no matter what, what the object is. Whereas the electrostatic force, sometimes it pushes away if it's, char if it's positively charged, sometimes it goes towards if it's negatively charged. So that's the one difference between the two. So which diagram best represents the direction of the gravitational force and the electrostatic force acting on sphere A due to the mass and charge of B. So A is always gonna be attracted to B gravitationally. So it's gonna be this one here, that's possible. It's not gonna be this one because that's pushing away, but A is always gonna be attracted to B. So A could be this one, that definitely would work, but not this one because A is always gonna be attracted to B gravitationally. So we know that it can be three, and we know that it can be one, right? Because we know that the force of gravity is always going to go towards B. Now, B will also be attracted to A in the same direction, but we're looking at A attracted to B. Now, at this point, we have our positive charge, so the, the negative charge is going to go out away from A. So we're not going to get something where the electrostatic force is pushing away from it, we're going to get something where the force of gravity is this direction, force of electricity is this direction. Um, my attractive force, will my positive charge be attracted to the positive charge on this side? Okay, so which, what do you think? Is positive attracted to a positive? Well, no, a positive is not attracted to a positive, so it's going to be, the answer is going to be A here, because... I have a positive charge which is going to be repelled from the positive charge of B. If this was a negative charge, it would go right towards it, but okay. Let's see, can we see this on my 
What is the magnitude of the electrostatic force between two electrons separated by a distance of 1 times 10 to the 8th meters? This is just Coulomb's law. So I'm going to do 8.99 times 10 to the 9th. Remember, it's just K times Q times Q times R2. Our, our charge on an electron is 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 times 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19. Remember, fundamental charge on an electron. And we're going to divide that by the distance between squared, 1.00 times 10 to the negative 8 squared. Yikes, look at the math on that one. 8.99 e to the 9th times 1.6 e to the 1, 9 negative. I'm just going to square that since it's multiplying. And I'm going to divide that by 1 e to the 8th. Oops. 1 e to the 8th squared equals... And I screwed that one up completely. Try to get 9e to the 9th times 1.6e to the 1, 9 negative squared divided by 1e to the 8th negative squared. 2.3 times 10 to the negative 12. Ooh, look, that worked. All right. Two metal spheres, A and B, possess charges of 1 microcoulomb and 2 microcoulombs, respectively. In the diagram below, arrows, arrow X or F represents the electrostatic force on sphere B by sphere A. Um, which arrow represents the magnitude and direction of the electrostatic force exerted on A by sphere B? Okay, this is not really about Coulomb's law. This is about the rule about force. If I put a force on an object, the object puts an equal but opposite force on me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, well, that's the force on B, so I need an equal force on A in the opposite direction. Okay, so if you look at this, this force equals that force but opposite. Okay, this is one of, this is Newton's third law, right? All right, last one. Two small identical metal, char or metal charges, A and B, on an insulated stand are given... Uh, a charge of 2 times 10 to the negative 6 coulomb. The distance between the spheres is 2 times 10 to the negative 1. Calculate the magnitude of the force. We're just using coulombs. 8.99 times 10 to the 9th times 2.0 times 10 to the negative 6 times... Oh, each. Well, we can just square that then since we're just going to multiply that by itself. And then we have this distance of 2.0 times 10 to the negative 1 squared. Okay, do the math. This is just Coulomb's law. 8.99e to the 9th times 2e to the 6 negative squared divided by 2e to the 1 negative squared equals 0 0.899.